Okay, welcome to part two. And let us take a look at the visuals of the heavens. So the moon was sighted yesterday. So today is the second day of the new moon. And tomorrow will be the third. So August 11th, tomorrow, the border on the ecliptic of the zodiac. Because the narrative starts with the constellation Virgo and it closes with the constellation Leo. And the border on the zodiac, the 12 o'clock mark on the heavenly clock is exactly over there. And there is some debate whether or not this star, Zavijava, where the conjunction of the moon and uh, Venus takes place tomorrow, whether that is still part of Leo or Virgo. And in the modern rendition, it is not. But in the ancient rendition, this star at the tip of the point of the tail of Leo, the nebula and Zavijava marked the border on the zodiac. So Venus and the moon are just crossing over that border according to the modern renditions. They are the crown jewels of Virgo. And the uh, conjunction of the moon and Venus takes place one minute before nine tomorrow morning at Zavijava, the gloriously beautiful, speaking of the glorification of the bride. So the conjunction of the moon and Venus, Wednesday, August 11th, one minute to nine Giza time. So this is the same uh, celestial occurrence from a different angle. And there we can see clearly how the star Spica that afternoon will be at perfect meridian, the vertical alignment of the heavens. Spica, the representation of the first fruits, but also the branch, the coming branch, Jesus, and the promised seed, both capital seed, but we also have been familiarized with the mantra of Revelation 12. That was Jupiter, the king planet. And Spica is the star bordering the torso section of Virgo and the uh, lower body parts. So the transition at the time from Jupiter into the lower part was considered the birth of the man child. So Spica at Meridian at exactly 3.44 p.m. at the time of the time timestamp of the Enoch Walkers. And the asteroid Vesta is in the heart section of Virgo. Mars is between the loins of Leo. And the Mercury chief speaker or messenger planet, the thief of the Roman pantheon, so speaking to the people who will find themselves left behind, is at the handle of the sickle stars in Leo, also confirming time is at hand. And the scepter star of uh, Leo and the conjunction with Mercury happens the same day. So why is this alignment so uh, remarkable in my eyes is because the both the Christ angle alignment uh, pointed to Venus, the crowning of Venus by the scepter star Regulus, scepter star Regulus and Venus, and that was marked by the um, Giza pyramid uh, shaft alignment three days before the Revelation 12 sign. And during the Revelation 12 sign, the crowning of Virgo by the um, head stars of Leo plus the wandering planets and the combination of the wandering planets and the head stars of Leo make up an Egyptian crown of upper and lower Egypt. We showed that before. So that was the those were planets were the crown jewels of Virgo at the time, and especially Venus, because Venus represented the position of the Giza main pyramid, the God-designed Enoch built uh, emulation of the Bride of Christ. So that's why I think Venus is so important. And in the backdrop, we have the Perseid meteor shower of Jesus coming as a breaker and a way maker. And this is a couple of renditions of the false god worship of the crescent and the star, Venus and the crescent moon. In ancient Babylonian worship, 
Mary worship, Inyana uh, and Ishtar worship. This is the uh, drawing Venus uh, makes in the heavens with its elliptical, um, how do you say that, course through the heavens. It is just like the almond blossoms. And I remember a beautiful comment by a brother in Christ saying that the almond ha harvest is ready just about now. And we are these almonds, not just the grains, the summer wheat harvest, but the almonds are ready too. And that is a representation of the fruits of the spirit. So both the grain harvest, the summer wheat, the early grapes, and the almonds are ready at this time. And this is another rendition of the Greek goddess Artemis of the crescent and the moon and Baphomet worship. The um, crescent uh, moon is both atop but also below and then the Venus star. And the same goes for Shiva and even uh, Buddhism um, includes the crescent and the moon. And this is a an excerpt of a, start, a study which is linked in the end notes about how Ezekiel 8 to 11 also speaks of the idolatry in the temple was actually directed not only to the sun worship, but they had moon worship too of the moon god uh, Sin. And that was connected to the crescent and the star. So and this is going to happen on August 13th because God has marked that out in the heavens as well. August 13th, two days later, Venus will conjunct with Zavi Java and the third day moon will line up with Spica. And we can see how a faithful witness and the first fruits, which is reminiscent of Elijah, the faithful witness to the rapture of Elijah in 2 Kings 2 verses 11 to 12, how that is going to be on display in the heavens. So let us take a look. August 13th, that is the moon exactly in line with the star Spica. And at that exact same time, Venus is conjuncting the gloriously beautiful. So God marks out that moment in the heavens as well. So August 13th. The um, narrative of Elijah and Elisha in, is reenacted in the heavens. And meanwhile, the sun will be in the mouth of Leo, the lion of the tribe of Judah. So on August 13th, the day portion, which is Elul 5 on Torah calendar, that is also the commemoration in scripture of Ezekiel's second vision. Ezekiel 8, 9, and we talked about how Ezekiel 8, the abomination of the temple with all the jabs and the worship of the sun, was emulated in the Tokyo Olympics and especially in the closing ceremony. And that was the bookend of this entire created pandemic crisis, which was opened with the London Olympics bookend, closed in the Tokyo Olympics bookend, and now Ezekiel 8 to 11 is played out on the world stage, but it is also mimicked in the heavens. So August 13th, the day portion Elul 5, the commemoration of Ezekiel's second vision in Ezekiel 8 and 9, where he witnesses the temple abomination performed in secret. And the Lord is revealing what is happening behind the scenes by the leadership in an exact same way that we have been given knowledge of the matter, like David is being given knowledge of the matter of what goes on behind the scenes so we can be informed and instructed and also warn others. So the Tokyo Olympics rising sun worship and simultaneous jab and sprint defiling people's bodies, the temples, while the righteous in Ezekiel's uh, chapter 8, 9, 10, 11 are marked to safety, judgment is pronounced for those who are wayward and disobedient. And Ezekiel makes intercession for the people. So the righteous are marked and safe. There will be judgment for those remaining 
and the glory of the Lord afterward departs the temple of Solomon because of all the idolatry. And of course, we know that the restrainer, the power of the Holy Spirit operating through the bride, through the innocent in Christ, will be taken from the earth in the first departure. The glory of the Lord departs from the temple, emulated in the soon expected rapture and departing of this restraining force in and through the bride and the innocent in Christ who, like Ezekiel, John, and Esther, all bright types, they intercede for those coming after, after us. The people of Judah at the time had defiled the temple. God uh, pronounced judgment. He would fill the temple with their bodies, their blood. The Babylonians would be given the uh, ability to both burn and destroy the temple in 586 BC as prophesied which is a likely foreshadowing of the fiery judgment on America Babylon, but also of people's defiled bodies being destroyed in the time of tribulation. And if you would like to have a more detailed description of this narrative of Ezekiel 8 to 11 and how that speaks of a second fulfillment in our time, you can look at the end notes of the article. So again, the conjunction of Venus with the gloriously beautiful, the bride and the glorification coming together, August 13th, and the moon lining up with Spike at the first fruits. So both glorification and first fruits are marked in the heavens on that day. And in these verses, we can find that Spica refers to the branch, the promised seed, and the first fruits. We can find that in the book of Jeremiah, Zechariah, and Isaiah. So this is a rendition of Virgo, and the ancient Hebrew name of Virgo was Bethula. And that means the virgin or the pure woman. The star Zavijava, meaning the gloriously beautiful and pointing forward to the glorification of Virgo because she has been transformed into the image of God by this time. The star spica, meaning the ear of corn or wheat of first fruits, and that is another uh, reference to both the Messiah, the capital S seed of the woman, but also the offspring of the woman, the spiritual seed. Spica was also the master key of the Egyptian Dendera zodiac. We're going to go to Egypt because there are connections there too. Because Virgo's wheat stalk, the brightest star, known today as Spica, in Hebrew was al zemak meaning the branch, which is also the prominent title of the promised seed or offspring of God in the Old Testament. What is unique about this as it relates to the Dendera zodiac is that both uh, that Spica Alzimak is only one of two individual stars marked on this entire map. There are only two stars on the entire planisphere of Dendera, the ancient, most ancient rendition of the zodiac. And that is Sirius, the coming spring, a coming prince, the prince of peace, the eye of the hawk in Canis Major, and the star Spica, the first fruits. And if we take a look at these two important stars on the planisphere of Dendera, we can see the star Spica in Virgo's left hand over here, in between Virgo and Leo. And the entire planisphere is centered around the hawk next to Orion, the hawk eye Sirius, which is the bow star of, in this case, the cow, and in our modern rendition, it is Argo the ship, the ship that will take the disciples home to heaven, led and guided by Sirius, the coming prince. And the coming prince and Spica are connected together because it was the star Spica that marked the timing of the Lord's birth, 9-11-3 BC. And the moment that the wheat touched the horizon was the proposed timing of Jesus' birth. So the Lord is marking out 11th of August, the 13th of August, and it all connects both to his birth and his death from which our life spring forth. Much love.